Autism is the fastest growing developmental disorder in the U.S., affecting one out of every 68 children. Autistic kids often lack empathy and communication skills. There is no cure. But a new generation of robots are making a big difference. There are now many studies that show that many children with autism can be very responsive to robots. And so it seems that robots may have the ability to elicit latent social skills in kids with autism. Professor Maya Matarik leads a team at the University of Southern California, and she pioneered the use of socially assistive robots 12 years ago. One kind of socially appropriate behavior that might be difficult for a child with autism is turn taking. Knowing when it's their turn and then when they should give up a turn. Let's play go fish. A turn taking game is something that a robot can play with a child and practice. And this idea of practicing frequently in a controlled way is something the robots are really good at. And so if the child is more willing to practice with the robot because the robot is not as intimidating as maybe a human might be, then the first step is have the child play with the robot and then the next step definitely should be the child play with the robot and another child. This is Bandit. You are pointing at me. Please don't do this at others because people will not know why you are pointing at them. It is programmed to teach a child proper behavior. Matarik's team is also developing robots to help the elderly as well as stroke and Alzheimer's patients. Her robots are not available to consumers yet, but there is a company in Dallas that already has therapy robots for sale. My name is Milo, and I am the next generation of therapy for children with autism. This humanoid bot was created by a startup called Robokind. Milo is already in 100 schools, teaching autistic kids social lessons, such as how to say hello and how to act at a birthday party. One study found the autistic children were engaged with Milo 87% of the time, compared with only 3% engagement with a therapist. Sensors and cameras embedded in these bots gather data that is used to improve future models. But robots are expensive. Milo, for example, costs $5,000, making it unattainable for most homes. Aren't there better alternatives? Why do we need robots when we have these uh, very powerful tablet or phone-based interfaces and increasingly now virtual reality as well? And my answer to that is if you want to help a child with autism interact with other children, pulling them into a virtual world is really not a good way to make them more functional in this world. So neuroscience evidence now shows that when people interact with robots, more areas of the brain and higher activation happens than when we interact with screens. A key part of robot-assisted therapy is to not just have it be between the user and the robot, it has to be with other people as well, especially in autism, because the deficit is about social behavior, so we want to engage children with autism in social behaviors with other children. Why would children who don't have autism play with children with autism? So one way that it might happen is if children with autism had really cool robots, because then other kids will be interested as well, and now you're creating an opportunity for children with autism to have more social interaction, to practice social skills, and so everyone benefits. Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.